Okay. 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 So uh, let's talk a little bit about Inyana de Yoma. It's uh, elections today. I'm not going to, sorry to disappoint, or you'll be relieved to hear, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for if you haven't voted yet. Um, I will say that I think it is important to vote, and halakhically it's, uh, it's a very good thing to do. You know, the, the story is told, by why in Russia you probably tell me the story wasn't true, but the story was told that they asked uh, the Chazanish in the early years of the state, should you go out and vote? The Chazanish said, yes, go out to vote. He said, it's a mitzvah to vote. They said, really? It's a mitzvah? It's a mitzvah like matzah? He said, no, it's a mitzvah like maro. But that's, uh, that's, what, uh, that's what they say. But it's, uh, it's interesting because I think when we think of elections, especially after the last few years, what we've had, you know, the associations that come to mind are politics, corruption, deals, all sorts of unsavory things that people think about when they think about politics. Um, but there's maybe something a little bit, there's maybe an extra level to it, at least in the ideal, that it should be, and it should be in the way that we relate to the concept. Um, first of all, it's very interesting. The day, today is uh, called, the, it's a Yom Shabbaton. So there's a phenomenon in modern Hebrew of words which are used in modern Hebrew, which are a little bit different from their original meanings, context in the Tanakh, etc. So that's one example. Shabbaton is what is that we don't have very many of them. Maybe that's why we have elections so often. But uh, Shabbaton is a, it's a day off, a day you don't have to go work. You do nothing. A Shabbaton in the Torah is Shabbat is a Shabbaton. Yom Kippur is a Shabbaton. It's not just uh, sitting and doing nothing. It's an active level of Kedusha. Maybe that's, uh, and that's what it's meant to be. There's a story of... Uh, a lot of the words that we have were invented, some, many were invented later. Many of the words in modern Hebrew were invented by Eliezer ben Yehuda when he revived the Hebrew language. And there were those who were very opposed to what he was doing. And there were those who were very supportive of what he was doing, obviously with uh, differences of opinion. So there were two rabbis who he would consult with a lot. One was Rav Cook, and the other was Rav Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld. They would help Eliezer ben Yehuda with certain words that he needed to know and things. And again, some of the criticism is that some of the words that were taken, so uh, I don't know when Shabbaton entered the Hebrew language, but, but uh, electricity, for example. So how do you say electricity in modern Hebrew? Chashma. Where does that word come from? That is a name that's Chashmalim, that is, that is a name of Malachim, of angels, something. So there were those who were very, very, uh, right, from Sefer Yechezkel, those who were very opposed to it. There's an interesting story of Ben Yehuda, so of Cook used to help him. But uh, in his letters, if you look at the letters, that the correspondence between Rav Kook and Ben Yehuda, so Rav Kook never writes Shalom to Ben Yehuda. He, he writes to him, but he doesn't say Shalom. They asked him once, and he said, Ben Yehuda is a Rasha. He said, you don't use Shalom is the, name of, is the name of God, and you don't use the name of God when you're dealing with the Rasha. He thought what he was doing was important, but he thought for various reasons he was... Uh, so they say the last time Rav Kook went to visit Ben Yehuda, he went into his room, and as he was leaving, he turned to him and he said, no... Maybe it's, time, maybe it's time for you to do tshuva, the whole zot, after, after all of this. It's time to do tshuva. And when you heard us, he turned to him and he said, maybe. And of course, left. And then I don't remember if it was within hours or within days. That was when, when uh, ben, ben Yehuda died. And that was, the, that was the last time that they ever spoke. So anyway, that's, uh, that's a point through with Hebrew. But there's a story I wanted to share, which uh, some of you may have heard. It's a piece which goes around every time we have elections, it's, it tends to resurface. And the truth is, when we went through that period of having five elections in two years or whatever it was, it started to get a bit tedious. You know, every four months reading the same story, so we stopped. But uh, Sivan Rav Meir, the journalist who was here last week, spoke in the shul. So she would say, when we were in that period of uh, elections, by the third or fourth round of elections, she said that her, her, her kids said to her, you know, we know we're the only democracy in the Middle East, but aren't we overdoing it a bit? But, <laughs> so uh, we seem to have stopped overdoing it. But listen to this. This is a story. This is from the diary entry of Rabbi Moshe Yekutiel Alpert, who was a ram in Yeshivat Eitz Chaim in Yerushalayim, somebody associated with the old Yeshuv, somebody who at least in appearance, you would look at him, you see a picture of him, and you would call him Haredi. Um, and he writes the following. This is his diary entry on the 25th of January, 1949. So this is the first elections for the Knesset. And this is what he said. It's, I've got it here in Hebrew. I'll read some of it in Hebrew, translate some of it in English. But he says like this. So he says at 5.35 a.m., 5.35 in the morning, he says, we got up. He says, I, together with my wife, my brother, and my brother-in-law. And we went. He says, He says, we went after our morning coffee. We put on our, uh, we put on our Shabbos clothes. 
for this great and holy day. May or may not be the reason that I'm wearing a white shirt today. I'm not disclosing. And he says, Kizeh hayom asa Hashem nagila v'nismachavo. Okay, this is, this is the perspective from the first uh, election. Yes, things have changed since then, but there's something that's worth zooming out and, and you know, taking stock of where we are. He, he says, After 2,000 years or more of exile, He says, Since the creation of the world, we've not had a day like this. We're going to elections for the Jewish state. He says, my son went, he left the house at quarter to six in the morning. Okay, he was voiting for. And then he says, the whole way towards the, uh, the polling booth. That's another one, by the way, the word kalpi. Where does, that, where does that word come from? That's from the Gemara in terms of in the Beit HaMikdash where they have the lots. Okay. Because going to the voting booth to vote was like going for a kafot and simchat Torah. I'm holding not the Sefer Torah, but I'm holding the identity document of the state of Israel, the Jewish state. There was no, there were no bounds to the happiness, to the joy that I had. Ten to six in the morning. Surprise! He was the first one there. So he says, like a shamash ayasham, the official, the attendant was there. Ha chashmal ayadolek, the electricity was on. She anu et hashamash epoem chavle vadat akalpi. He said, where, where is the electoral commission? Where are they? You know, it's time to stop. He says they haven't, they aren't here yet. So he says they waited until 5:54. At 5:54, two of them came, and at 6:02, at 6:02 in the morning, the chairman of the electoral commission arrives, and he says, machiti b'fanav al shelo ba bizman anachon. So something that would happen in the show. But he says, I, I, I protested to him. He didn't come on time. He's two minutes late. Yeah, all right, it says, you have to start at, the election starts at six o'clock. Nowadays, I think that, I think it starts a bit later, right? So, uh, he says, he apologized. Okay, so he says, now we have a quorum and now we can start. And uh, so then they had a discussion as to who should go and who should be the first one to vote. So he says, he was the oldest, so he gets to go and, uh, and vote first. Um, so he goes, I won't read you the whole thing, but he describes it. And he describes, he writes in the protocol that I, he says, the person there wrote in the protocol that I came at six o'clock. And he says, that's not correct. I actually came at 5.50 and the chairman only came at 6.02. Nonetheless, at, at 6.23, the elections begin. He says, you're the oldest one here. Right? You get to like you have now on the buses. So he says, now you have to, uh, you, you can vote first. And then he says, with, uh, how do you translate those words, right? But with a uh, trembling of, of uh, Kedusha, I went, I handed over my uh, ID document. He read out my name. He wrote my name down. He gave me the number to vote. Nowadays you have two envelopes. He had one envelope, okay? He went to, to vote. He says he votes for Bet at the time, which was the United Religious List. I came out, showed everybody I had just one uh, envelope to vote. Now listen to what he says. He says, This was the most sanctified moment in my entire life. This moment, this opportunity, my father couldn't do it. My grandfather couldn't do it. Only I was uh, able to achieve such a holy and pure moment. He says, I put the, the envelope inside. Shook everybody's hands, went out, waited for the rest of the family to vote. At 628, they were finished, they went home. He says, And then he went to Davin. 
And he got up in the morning, put on his Yom Tov clothes and everything, went to Sosa, so this is Bar Mitzvah, went and did that first, and afterwards he went to, uh, uh, he, he went to Dublin. So that's, again, we know a lot has changed since then. This was in 1949, and maybe in terms of politics, although it's always been to a certain extent. There are, you know, sometimes things are, things don't match up the ideal in reality, but it's worth taking a zoom out, thinking about the perspective, thinking about the opportunity, what we have, you mentioned Jewish sovereignty, being able to vote for Jewish elected representatives over us. It's not a, it's not, it's not a small thing. It's not a small thing at all. There, there was, uh, don't really have time to go into it now, but in terms of municipal elections, particularly over national elections, there are a lot of halachic matters that come into it. The Gemara says, in the Ktubot, so the Rabbi Hanina would go and he would clean the streets. He would clean the streets in Eretz Israel so that people wouldn't say, wouldn't speak Lashon Ara. We know by the Maraglim, it talks about Lashon Ara, what's you at Tibata Eretz Ra'ah, to say bad things about, about the Eretz Israel, to say bad things about the streets are looking dirty in order to avoid that. So uh, there's certainly importance in terms of who you vote for and what they do and how they're able to, uh, to help with these matters. Um, and then, that's just a little bit of maybe perspective in terms of, uh, you know, Reaching us out from the day to day uh, reality. Rabbi Hanania, when I cast your merits, I could buckle the Kodis Red, the Hakabalim Tom, it's watching a mother of its man's in Goya, deal to Ravi Adir.